here we're exporting music and it's mm -hmm. quite an achievement for Now your album is called Liebling. Liebling. What is it? So that's obviously Swedish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's German actually. Oh, is it? German for a loved one. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Well, you just why are you trying to confuse everyone? Swedish. You got a German title for your album, and it's in English. Yeah, isn't it great? It's a little bit crazy. Oh. Why have you done that? Well, it looks good on a T-shirt. <laughs> Go on, Andrea, say something Swedish for him. Prata svenska. Prata svenska, what does that mean? Speak Swedish. Speak Swedish. Prata svenska. Jag tycker om dig. Jag tycker om dig. What does that mean? I like you. Oh, that's very nice. Here she comes with a master plan. How are you going to put up with being a sex symbol? Well, I, I, I never, you know, when I was growing up, I was never like. Liked by women, no, but I was not the kind of popular guy, and I and I always been quite humble and looking, standing quite steady with both feet on the ground. And <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that I'm never going to see myself as a sex symbol. And I definitely, I mean, I came into music because I'm a musician, not to be a pop star. Now we're in a sauna, mm -hmm. so um. Is this the thing you do every day in Sweden? Yeah, yeah, actually. Good. It is. It's, 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 we got, I got a house in the countryside north of Sweden where my mother comes from. And, uh, we got a most amazing sauna there. And, uh, yeah, because we do. And if it's winter time, you go out in the snow. It's rolling into the sauna. Do you really roll in the snow? Mm -hmm. Are you just saying that? No, today? I do. You really roll yeah. in the snow? Do you whip yourself with those birch twigs? That's more f for the fins. They're much more into the whipping thing. Why do We're do more that? into the snow weird, thing. I don't know. It's some kind of punishment thing about the finish. I don't know why they're doing it. Still to come on the Ozone, Hepburn and UK Garage. First, what's been checking the bowels of the pop world. Stand by for some big new entries in the top ten this week. I have a dream. But Westlife will take a long break and come back with some decent tunes. Down six to ten for Ronan's boys. Up three to nine, the only climber, DJ Look and MC Neat with a little bit of luck. A new entry at eight for New Generation and In Your Arms Rescue Me with vocal sample from 60s soul diva Fontella Bass. It's eight weeks round now for Awful Dodger. Fallen four to seven, re-e-wind the crowd's their bulk selector. It's a big new entry for Judge Jules's trance outfit. Highgate are pitching in every direction at six. And those trans anthems keep on coming. New at five, Des Mitchell and welcome to the dance. Down to four, the Manics and the Masses against the Classes. From Norman Coop's label comes a second highest new entry this week, Scanty Sandwich and because of you, a big bite at three. Sticking at two, this is music for your drop top. Donnell Jones and You Know What's Up featuring TLC's Left Eye. Which means Britney Spears gets her second number one and in so doing becomes the youngest solo artist ever to have two number one hits. This teenager was born to make you happy. Nice hits. Five years ago, Britain's newest urban dance music was underground, uncommercial and only in London. Now, with two of last year's biggest selling singles, a dedicated award ceremony, and a Radio 1 show hosted by scene pioneers The Dream Team, the doors to UK Garage have been blown clean off. We thought it'd do well in the, in the clubs. When you see like, kids just running around the streets like singing it, that is just, just blows your mind. The first things first, UK Garage isn't a speed garage. It's probably about 95 or 96. The media came up with this term, speed garage, when they heard this new form of speeded up, vocal-led dance music that was coming out of the urban areas of southeast England. Stretch sampled vocals laid over fat bounty bass lines turned tracks like R.I.P. Groove into speed garage anthems. But in the same way as jungle producers coined the term drum and bass, garage heads wanted their own name for Britain's new hybrid dance sound. 
I think the best way to describe this music is as UK garage, a distinctly British version of American garage incorporating other urban styles of dance music like R&B, soul and drum and bass. And like drum and bass, UK Garage was born in the underground club nights of the South East at Twice As Nice, Pure Silk and Sun City. Cultural Vibes at 06 in South End kicked off more than three years ago. I like house, but with um, Gary, it's very open. I can go out and socialise, I can go in the pub, have a drink, I can listen to Garage. It's probably the third most popular forward dance music in the UK after house and trance. It's sexy sort of music, so you can dance, make yourself go and really enjoy yourself. It certainly rules the urban clubs of the southeast and is beginning to break in the north. The sky's the limit, isn't it? I mean, it's now gone pop. When it all first started, you don't think that your little scene is going to get, you know, evolve and, and get so, so large, and it has, and it surprised me. But while drum and bass purists often see commercial success as a form of selling out, UK Garage has happily exploded into the charts, and this week there's not one but two singles in the top ten. Three ones, they're phenomenal. I'm certainly not complaining. But if anyone wants to come forward and say, you know, we sold out, uh, you know, we know that's not the case. The final version didn't differ in any way to the version they were hearing in the clubs last year. I think that a lot of garage producers' attitudes are fairly similar to American R&B or rap producers. They're not afraid of success in a way that many producers from a dance underground often are. Definitely we want to take it you know, all the way, get that number one single, number one album. World domination. Among the nominees at next month's Garage Awards are the Dream Team, who've been DJing at Garage Club since the scene started and remixing the likes of Naina Cherry, making the top 20 last year. They've just started a new Radio 1 show, a real sign that UK Garage has arrived. I think that the success is very much owed to the accessibility of the music. As time's gone on, the producers, the MCs, the DJs have understood the importance of the melodies of the hooks in the music that make people remember the music and then it becomes catchy and infectious so people will sing the songs they know rewind select tyrant sweet like chocolate but and then they remember it the thing about songs is that it's something that younger people can latch on to which i think has sort of aided you know the whole the whole scene um, to sort of have more chart band success Shanks and Bigfoot and Artful Dodger have made their marks already. The stars of Tomorrow are acts like Colour Girl, Y Tribe and MJ Cole. He could well do um, for UK Garage what Goldie did for Drum and Bass. MJ's debut album comes out in the summer, but he knows the best is still to come. The youth crew down the bottom is strong and, uh, and it's doing well at commercial level, so you know, it's not like we're all old codgers or anything. There's really good 16, 17, 18 year olds making great stuff, you know. The kind of, I'm like, wow, the new lick. So the future of UK Garage looks safe here and in Europe, where the Cypriot resort of Ayanapa is starting to rival Ibiza's house scene. But the real test is if the rest of the world buys it, especially America. I think we have got something unique to, to give to them. As a, as a, as a, you know, the UK has its own story to tell. The future is bright. The future is UK Garage. Big up your chest. Lose the red bus and trust in that. Run up the heaven doors, exchange my life for yours. Leave a stake out the door. Me casa, su casa. Just remember to turn the lights off in the hall. From the man who brought us Hard Knock Life, here is his new single, which can only be described as more of the same. Continuing this rather peculiar practice of sampling riffs from classic musicals, this features a choice chunk of I'd Do Anything from the soundtrack of Oliver. Please, sir, can I have some more? We your body all is right with the world. No matter how pretty she is, you never like it, my girl. That's how we run when you ain't around. I spank your son, keep him in line. If you should die, I keep him like mine. God forbid, keep this in mind. My
Left field have revealed their first live dates in four years will be headlining Homelands this spring. The 17-hour dance festival, which takes place on three different dates at three different sites around Britain and Ireland, also features a headline set from Ian Brown and top-name DJs, including Carl Cox, Judge Jules, BT, Pete Song and Paul Van Dyke. A total of 90,000 people are expected at Winchester on May 27th, at New Cumlock on April 27th and at County Meath two days later. Clearly, larging it in a field is no longer something you only do in the summer. I suppose April sounds very early, doesn't it? To offer a festival um, at the end of the winter is the best time to do it because people are just wintered out and they're just desperate to get out and, you know, have a party. With their third single on the way, these girls are yet to quit. In the past year, they've had two top ten hits, uh, a debut album, and even appeared on US television as vampires. Yes, Hepburn are quite definitely back, but have they still got enough fight to make it? Last time you came on the show, <laughs> We had uh, 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 Beverly was here. Beverly was here. And now, and now she's gone. She's changed. Now, she's she's turned into transformed. Tasha. All that plastic new surgery. Improved. The new improved Beverly. And you know that I've met Natasha before, a long time ago. What? Have you? Oh, have you? When I go home, get the <laughs> Another power pop combo, <laughs> Shamrock. <laughs> yes, I did. Tell us more about Shamrock, Natasha. Well, it was um. My friend produced the track and he asked me if I wanted to do it with them and go on TV and things like that. So I said, yeah, and it was a really good laugh. I enjoyed it a lot. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Natasha, Beverly, who's better? Who's the best drummer out of the two? Natasha. Natasha. And we're not just I'm saying that. Natasha's out there one of the best 15 in the country. Well, I wouldn't go quite that far. I'm endorsed by Pearl and there's only 15 drummers in the country. Endorsed by Pearl. <laughs> It's very important, it would seem, to Hepburn to have this, the, this sort of a more of a, rock, a harder image than maybe other girl bands that are around at the moment. Is that something that is that a deliberate thing? I don't think it's deliberate. You know, we just we don't do the kind of things that other girl bands do. You know, there's no point of us doing like dance routine or anything like that because it's not, you know, as a group, it's not us. It annoys us in a way that we get so many comments like, oh, can you actually play your own instrument? What's this Buff Buffy the Vampire Slayer thing? It was just last year, the producer of the show in America heard I Quit right. and really liked the track and wanted to use it. We got the chance to um, reshoot the video of I Quit. It was cool because we actually had to be vampires for the part of the video. Have you ever been down? You've got a new single coming out very soon. It's a very sad song. Is that what? Like, would that be fair to say? It's about a small town and wanting to get out of that small town to move on to somewhere bigger. Right. And that's what I did when I was 16. I moved to London. In the video, you know, we're incorporating that, like everything that goes on. Like there's somebody spitting milk. Um, yeah, I didn't somebody. like. I, I saw that. You didn't like that bit. Well, I wasn't. I thought he was being sick. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was some sort of projectile vomiting. No, just didn't want to see that kind of thing on my TV. I was actually having my tea at the time. Oh. Who do you look upon as the sort of people that you're competing with in the market, as it were? When we come out, there was two other bands quite similar to us that came out at the same time, 21st Century Girls yeah. and Thunderbugs. What happened to 21st Century Girls? Well, I don't know. You do, because you're looking at me like that as if you're going to say, that. well... Now I are they think still they with... would have been unnoticed, didn't they? Were well, they still with us? Do they still exist? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're doing quite well over abroad somewhere. Right. So... Huge in Luxembourg. Yes, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> She's my favourite Hepburn. She is lovely, isn't she? Is that because she was the only Hepburn that didn't speak? Oh, possibly. <laughs> Next week on The Ozone. I'm going to be meeting Tommy Lee, ex-Motley Crew drummer and well-endowed husband of Pamela Anderson, reborn as rock, rap, hellraiser, methods of mayhem. And I'll be endearing myself to the man-hating hip-hop chick with big hair that is Khalees.
Plus, Ian Brown will be opening up after a year of silence. See ya.